Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning again <laughs> to my Transforming Faith Christian Center family, to my TFCCE church, to my TFCC family all around the world. We're back. Yes, sir. We're back. Yep, and we have changed. We've changed uh, places. Not We're really. in the TFCC studio. Yeah, we've done yeah. one here before. A absolutely, yeah. we have. Yeah, we have. Yeah, yeah we just celebrated Thanksgiving. Absolutely, just like you. Yeah, <laughs> we celebrated Thanksgiving. And Pastor James's family is here visiting yeah. from Alabama. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, we decided to do it from our home studio today to record today's message from the home studio. Because you know what, Pastor James? It's not about the location. Absolutely. It is about the vessel that God is using Hallelujah. to bring forth his word. Absolutely. So whether we are in our home studio, whether we are in the church, whether we are screaming on a street corner, mm -hmm. it's literally about the yeah. Holy Spirit talking through yeah, us. For sure. So here we are. I yeah. hope everyone had an amazing Thanksgiving. Yeah. Ours was incredible. It was incredible. <laughs> it, was it was incredible. incredible. I, was, hey, hey, can, I was trying to get her to get a word by herself. But she was like, no, nah, dude, we ain't doing that. We're going to do this together. Just just joking. Just. He's already trying to get me into the message lies that keep me tied. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I, I'm at a place right now in my life. <laughs> I heard something that was very, very crucial. We actually talked about it right before we went live. A lot of people that sign up for this, a lot of people that believe that they have been called to pastor or they believe that they are a prophet or an apostle or an evangelist, whatever you plan to, mm. whatever you believe that God is calling you for in the body of Christ, when you sign up for this, you are signing, you are signing up to be God's mouthpiece, yeah. meaning that yeah. he is entrusting yeah. you to give the word to yeah. people because you are literally the one that nurtures someone's soul. Heavy responsibility. Heavy responsibility. Yeah, so sure. because of that, there are often times where I know that God is still doing a work in me. So I'm never eager or antsy yeah, sure. to get to this place yeah. because in God's perfect timing, yeah. it's all going to come yeah. into place. Yeah. So um, yeah. I still work full time, y'all. Yeah. So if you all can know my they schedule know some days. They, know. they, know. So, yeah, so they also know you got it. After, guess what? I got it while I'm sitting right here with you as yeah. well. So <laughs> here to we everybody are. everybody that's under the sound of my voice, ladies and gentlemen, this time right here that we are doing right now, it's coming to an end. Yes. It will not be long before we're at 1320 Alameda, Genoa. Yay. Yeah, in our new location, in our new spot, ladies and gentlemen. I absolutely cannot wait because, like I say, I'm a stickler for, for new. Absolutely. So I'm waiting on a new challenge. Yeah. I'm waiting on the new opportunities. We're waiting on new vision. We're waiting on new people. I'm, I'm about to, I'm about to, let me calm down. I'm just so excited about what God is about to do in the new place through you and through me also yeah. for the vision of TFCC. Absolutely. It's a, a much significantly larger space than yeah. what we came out of. And I'm excited. Yeah. You all can begin to sow into the vision Absolutely. now. We are doing a complete build out of yeah. a new facility. Yeah. Right now it is just concrete floors. Yeah. Um, no walls are even up yet. Yeah. We just met with the architect where they are laying out the plan right for TFCC. Yeah. So our plan is to be in the building prayerfully by the end of January, beginning of February as in 2023. As yeah, as soon as possible. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, we're not going to, um, once again, God's appointed time. So I'm Absolutely. really excited. But yeah. brand new building. We just did a really, really big um, outreach there for in sure. the community sure. this past Thanksgiving. And they were excited, yeah, too. Yeah, at this past Thanksgiving, TFCC yeah. gave out gift cards to about 55 families in the community. In lieu of turkeys, we gave mm. people gift cards to um, Walmart mm. so they can go and buy the grocery that they need or the mm. supplies that they need. Sure. So um, yeah. it was a really, really great turnout. Absolutely. Did a lot of evangelizing, yeah. praying for people, yeah. meeting people in the community. Yeah. And the thing that I think is so exciting is you all know our story. We started in the living room, but our very first Sunday service no. on November the 1st of 2015 was in this little bitty media room that held about, what, 20, 25 yeah, people? Yeah, about 20, 24, 25 Our new people. location yeah. is literally walking, walking distance. distance. <laughs> it yeah. is right there. It's really, really yeah. close. Like you can cut through one it's of our neighborhoods. It's kind of like God brought us full circle. He brought us right back yeah. to where we started. Absolutely. So we're excited. Yeah. 1320 yeah. Almeda, Genoa. Yeah. Brand yeah. new building. Yeah, the yeah. information's on the screen. Yeah. So I'm excited Absolutely. about it. You can see pictures yeah. and begin to yeah. sow into the vision. Yeah, and to the TFCCE church that's all around the world, we want to welcome you too. Yeah. Stay connected, stay close. So as soon as we start putting out the 
updates. We want you. We want you to be a part of what God is doing. We want to welcome you. If you're going to fly out of Florida, if you're going to fly out of New York, if you're going to fly out of California, we want you to come and be a part of what God is about to do in the first Sunday. I absolutely cannot wait. Absolutely. Yeah. And also speaking of first Sundays, we will continue to meet in person absolutely. every first Sunday this until we go into our building. So we'll be meeting on December 4th. Mm. Um, which will be the following Sunday. Yeah. I'm excited about that. We'll be back at the Power Center, right where we did our church anniversary. And then we will also be back um, yeah. in January for mm -hmm. the first Sunday of the new year. Mm -hmm. So we will continue to meet in person mm -hmm. because it's just, ah, wow. The church anniversary, it was just yeah. powerful. The presence of God when we all assembled yeah. together. So yeah. plan to join us yeah. next week on yeah. December the 4th. Next Sunday, December yeah. the 4th, seven days from today, we will be together. So why don't you come? Be at the Power Center. And um, yeah, we're still going to be live, but we want you in the building. Yeah. Yeah. And then y'all know we built off the presence. Yeah. We birthed off the presence. Right. Yeah. Just, we know that in thy presence is the fullness mm -hmm. of joy. So mm -hmm. there is no way in the world we will miss the opportunity not to gather mm -hmm. and assemble together and let God's glory come down and reign. And it's exciting, too, because December 5th. It's, it's my birthday. Yeah, so, yeah, for sure, for yeah, sure, for sure, for sure. Absolutely, it'll We're be awesome. We're gonna celebrate the woman of God, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, everybody know that Tiffany will tell you in a minute, she's Tiffany. She's not Lady Tiffany. She's yeah. Tiffany. And it's, it's fine. But at the same time, um, if it wasn't for Tiffany, it wouldn't be a TFCC. So therefore, the, um, this is a culture of honor. And so next Saturday, next Sunday, I mean, December 4th, we're going to celebrate Tiffany for December the 4th, going into December the 5th, which is her birthday. Her birthday. And I am absolutely excited I just about want to God add, giving her another year. I'm grateful for, yeah, I'm grateful another. for another year. But I was going to say, you said there would, there would not be a TFCC without me. I'm not going to say that because God has a calling on your life. Yeah. And that's why I, at he this moment, that's why. He might have called it what, else. There you go. It would have, because <laughs> his will was going that's to be why done I said regardless. TFCC, yeah. Christian it just maybe sure. not would have been yeah. as um, yeah. the spirit of excellence yeah. Yeah. had it not been me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to everybody that's under the sound of my voice, we know y'all are ready for this word. We want to have a conversation yeah. about this series we've started entitled Lies That's Keeping You Tied. Yeah. I, think, I think the conversation is needful right now because maybe, um, maybe I've been going into some places that when you start talking about this fabrication and deception, that some other people may need some clarification. Yeah. Are you with me? So, ladies and gentlemen, right where you are, why don't you hit the share button? Why don't you share with your followers on Instagram? Why don't you share with your followers on Facebook? Why don't you share with your followers on YouTube? Give them the opportunity to come in and get on the rhythm of what God is doing. Ladies and gentlemen, let me, let me tell you this, what I know for a fact. If you can uncover that lie, I can guarantee you, if you can find the lie, you can untie the tie Jesus. in any area of your life Let's pray. Spirit of the living God, we honor you. Thank you, Jesus. We celebrate you. We appreciate you, and we thank you for everything you're doing. We thank you for everything you've done. We thank you for everything that you're about to do. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit of truth. You are the spirit of truth that comes to expose every lie. We bind the hand of the enemy, and we eliminate every form of manipulation, yes, every form of intimidation, every form of temptation, and every form of deception. Holy Spirit, open up the eyes of our understanding so that we may see the height, the width, the length, the depth, and the breadth of what you're trying to say so you can send us into the next dimension of who you've called us to be. The grass may wither, the flower may fade, but it is your word that shall stand forever. Yes, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Pastor James, yeah. this series has been amazing okay. to me. So I don't know if you all know, I don't know if you even know this. Mm -hmm. There are times where I've always, and I've said it before, I always pray and I ask the Holy Spirit, do not allow the spirit of familiarity mm -hmm. From me to you, mm -hmm. meaning that I'm so familiar that you're my husband, mm -hmm. that sometimes you can be so familiar with somebody mm -hmm. that when they begin to speak a word from God, you're so familiar with them so it doesn't really hit yeah. you or pierce you the same. So this message that you have been preaching, it has been remarkable. It has made me really look inside of myself and figure out what are the things that are keeping me yeah. tied? Mm -hmm. What are the things that yeah. are making me um, not feel comfortable no. or to hold myself back. Um, if anybody knows my personality, 
this arena, um, the church world, is oh. very, very new for me. I'm much more comfortable mm -hmm. in a boardroom mm -hmm. or in a more like um, like a working environment, mm -hmm. not necessarily a church environment. Mm -hmm. And there has been so many times in my life where the enemy whispers in my ear and he'll tell me what I'm not qualified to yeah, do. Sure. You don't know enough. You're not, you're, you're not well versed enough mm -hmm. in this. And because I respect the position so much, uh -huh. there are so many times where I can feel myself being like shying away from yeah. certain things or sure. um, literally they're just listening to you just over the past couple of weeks i have really been trying to uncover some lies. those lies yeah. that have been keeping me tied that have been keeping me from my god-given mm -hmm. purpose that have making me yeah. not want to walk into where mm -hmm. i really believe the holy spirit mm -hmm. is nudging me to go and so i just think this i think this series is so um beneficial because sometimes we are always looking for someone to blame. Mm -hmm. So it's things like this hasn't happened in my life because this person, this didn't happen in no. my life because of my upbringing. This didn't happen because of this. Well, the truth of the matter is no matter what, yeah. we've all been dealt a measure of faith. Absolutely. And because we've been dealt the measure of faith, yeah. the enemy is making us hold on to a lie that we can't accomplish uh -huh. this, that, or the other yeah. because of this, because of a, a certain situation or an yeah. upbringing. But the Holy Spirit is really saying, untie that yeah. once you became saved and I'm living inside of you you can do yeah. whatever you, you know you are we can we have the ability as believers yeah. to really really do more than what we think we can do mm -hmm. but it's really because we're often afraid to walk out on faith yeah. because we are tied to a lie yeah absolutely it's a couple of points that I want you to understand and I want you to realize why this series is extremely important. Yeah. The first thing I want to start off saying is this. When you start talking about lies, you start talking about fabrication, hmm. right? And so the first thing the Lord wants you to know is this, is that fabrication is designed to destroy your emancipation. Mm. Fabrication is talking about a lie, right? But emancipation talks about freedom. Can you define fabrication? Yeah, fabrication is pretty much like a falsehood. Okay. It is like when somebody tell you something and they know it's not true, mm -hmm. but at the same time, they're telling you something to leave you in the lie, leave you in bondage, because nine times out of 10, they're trying to get some control over you. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of 10, they're trying to take advantage of you. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of 10, they're trying to keep you ignorant for their personal gain. Got you. Okay. So the enemy gives us lies, mm -hmm. deception, fabrication, so he can continue to use us for his own personal gain. Gotcha. Am I making That's any good, sense? Right. Yeah, so if he can use us for his personal gain, watch this, he don't necessarily have to destroy you physically. Jesus says that the thief come if not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy, but right. I've come that you may have life and have it more, more abundantly. abundantly. Watch this, when you're talking about stealing, killing, and destroying, he's talking about destroying the truth out of you so he can put the fabrication or the lie in you so that you can reproduce what you are. Mm. If you are producing a lie, what, nine times out of 10, if you are living a, a lie, nine right. times out of 10, all you will do around to people who are around you is reproduced a lot. You, sure. Are you with me? Absolutely. So when you start talking about fabrication, it is designed to begin to stop your emancipation. Jesus says, I mean, I mean so, the, so the Bible says in Romans 1 and 17, for the righteousness of God has been revealed from faith to faith. Mm -hmm. The Bible goes on to talk about in 2 Corinthians, sixth chapter that we go from glory to glory. Right. So if we're going from faith to faith, glory to glory, we also go from freedom to freedom. Mm -hmm. If you continue in my word, you are my disciples. Indeed, you will know the truth. Right. And the truth will make you free. Right. Whom the son is set free right. is free indeed. So you see, we're going into these levels right, right now. Right. So therefore, if I'm going from truth to truth, the only thing that can stop me from getting to the next level of truth is a lie. Mm -hmm. The reason why he wants us to go from truth to truth so our options will explode. Right. And then it can take the limits off us, the labels off us, and the lids off of us so we can live at another degree of freedom. So once we live at another degree of freedom, then God expects for us to go down and get who we used, to, used be to be and pass the next dimension of freedom on to the next people. Right. I'm and so making it any sounds sense. like that gives you the ability, the yeah. ability to 
start killing generational curses. Absolutely. Most of the time, we know that a generational curse, we've been taught that is a negative thinking pattern uh -huh. that literally it goes from generation to generation. Yeah, absolutely. So if you have never been emancipated, like you're mm -hmm. saying, or you've never been exposed to a yeah. level of freedom, yeah. then how do you yeah. expose your child yeah. to the next level of freedom? You cannot. That's how you see people that stay in that same divorce. Cycle after Bondage. divorce. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it just, you can just look at, I mean, alcoholism, alcoholism. It just continues mm -hmm. down the bloodline. Yeah. It's because it's been that negative thinking pattern yeah, sure. that nobody has ever broken yeah. free from. So yeah. they've been tied to this life. Absolutely. And so, and so, and so, so we don't, we, we don't necessarily have to call them generational curses. You can, but what she's saying is generational thinking patterns. Yes. It goes from this generation to the next generation. Nobody breaks breaks out of the thinking pattern. Mm -hmm. And the reason why you don't break out of the thinking pattern is because the, the fabrication will not allow the liberation. Right. Or it will not allow the emancipation. Right. Liberation and emancipation is freedom. Mm -hmm. God came to the earth. He says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion. We know that the image of God is love. And when he says likeness, the likeness of God is power. Let them, freedom, right. let them have dominion. Everything God says is truth. Truth is tied to freedom. This is so important because if you're ever going to get free in any area of your life, if you're broken, you will stay broken if you are living a lie. If you're trying to get to wholeness, you can never get to wholeness until you find truth. Are you with me? Absolutely. So, so therefore, so, so, so let, let, let me tell you something about, let, let, me, let, me, let me go into another part of this also. Let me tell you something about the power of deception and fabrication. The deceiver, in order for the deceiver to deceive you, the deceiver have to already have truth. In order for the deceiver to deceive you, uh -huh. the deceiver has to already have truth. In other words... God says you are the light of the world. Okay. The enemy knows you are the light of the world, mm -hmm. but the enemy's job is to make you feel like you're not the light of the world because he know that you he know that you is that and you are. He right. know that you are, and right. since you are, if he can keep you thinking that you're not, you will never challenge him to go to the next level. Absolutely. Are you with me? Absolutely. So the deceiver, if he's going to take advantage of you. If the deceiver is going to uh, use you for his personal gain, he has to bring you to a point that you will never get to the place of truth and you will stay in the lie. So if you stay in the lie, you will stay tied. And if you are tied, you can never get to the next dimension of freedom. Let me give you an applicable um, example. You are a woman and you have been in a relationship mm -hmm. with an overbearing, mm -hmm. abusive man. <laughs> the man continues to tell you, nobody else is going to want Absolutely. you. You're not about nothing. Mm -hmm. I don't want you. Look at mm -hmm. you. Giving you all of mm -hmm. these negative things about yourself. Mm -hmm. He's telling you this so in the back of your mind that you will not begin to start seeing yourself as God made you. You will stay tied into a situation because you will begin to believe the mm -hmm. lie. Nobody else will want me. I'm not worthy of anybody else. I'm just, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. The deceiver yeah. is the husband or the boyfriend. And he knows the truth. He knows the truth. The thing is, he is trying to keep you to a place where you no, you no longer explore mm -hmm. any other options Absolutely. with another man that Absolutely. you never get into a healthy and productive relationship. Yeah. So he deceives you yeah. knowing who you are, because yeah. think about it. If you were that awful. Why was he with you in the first place? You. you have to go back to day one. When you met me, I was, I was everything. Absolutely. I was the girl that you chased down. Sometimes you have to remind yourself yeah. who you are. So that's when you're saying the deceiver yeah. knows the truth. He knows the truth. Right. And so, so he know in order to keep you out of the next place of freedom, then he got to tell you a lie. Right. He got to put the lie before your face so much that you start believing the lie. And when you believe the lie, then you start making choices that is conducive to the deception or the fabrication that he's brought you. It could be, Pastor James. Any sense. Absolutely. But yeah. it can be little things that the enemy just whispers. It doesn't even necessarily have to be like I just gave the example of a relationship. It can be things that the enemy just whispers to you yeah. about yourself that you just really start believing. Absolutely. I'll put myself on the cross. Well, he reminds me all the time. Well, Tiffany, you don't have a seminary degree. Tiffany, you've just been in, in, in the ministry of Pastor James for seven years. Tiffany, you, you're not skilled well, enough. You don't know the Bible backward well, and, backwards and forwards. You need to just sit down and just be quiet. Well, be, he tells well, me this. And so often, like I'm saying, I'm listening to your messages and I can, I, 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 they're cutting me. Well, it's because I have become one with a lie yeah. about myself where I'm telling myself what I'm not qualified for. Absolutely. 
And so deception, the word deception, it means to call, to deliberately call someone to believe something that is not true. Mm. Deliberately. Yeah. So the enemy intentionally so good. causes you to believe so good. that you are not the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He so deliberately good. causes you. Watch this. He don't just deliberately cause you to believe it based off your thoughts that's taking place on the inside. Usually he go get somebody that may be close to you mm -hmm. that will begin to empower the thoughts that you are already feeling about you Such so it. that you can make the agreement with it. And when you make the agreement, with that's it. when deception takes place. And when deception takes place, then you cannot continue to move towards the next level of transformation. So, so the deceiver is calculated. He knows that he knows the truth is this, that the word of God says this is the victory that overcometh the world, even your faith. Mm -hmm. He know that you got victory. Right. But his job is, is to make you think you don't have victory. Jesus. His job is to make you believe that you don't have victory. When he makes you believe you don't have victory, he don't have to do anything else. Right. You are going to do it to yourself, to yourself he's already simply made because you. Absolutely. you don't believe that you got the victory. The deceiver has to know the truth. He knows that Jesus is already defeating him on the cross. That's so good. He knows that you are not a sinner. So therefore, he will make other people in other pulpits tell you that you are a sinner that is saved by grace. He gives you, he gives you a 15% truth and he covered up with an 85% lie so that when you believe the rest of the lie, you remain tied. You know, I just got a vision right where you were saying that you all know that we are spirit beings. Uh -huh. The enemy, he's a spirit Absolutely. being. He's looking for a body Absolutely. to get into. It just made me think about in the spirit world, yeah. the enemy already sees us walking around spotless. For sure. He sees us literally that yeah. the Holy Spirit is in us. Yeah. He sees us spotless, yeah. but it's his goal to make us see ourselves dirty. Absolutely. Because you're right. The deceiver knows the truth. He it. knows that the victory was yeah. won for us. Yeah. So if you can just imagine what that looks like, the enemy is looking at this spotless spirit with the Holy Ghost living inside of him. It's his job to make you look dirty, to make you feel like you are yeah. a sinner and yeah. not a daughter or not a son. So that's really good. A deceiver has to know the truth in order to deceive you. Yeah, because he's deliberately and intentionally setting you up to deceive you. Why? Because he want to take advantage of you. Right. He want to use you for his own personal gain. Yes. That's the same thing in negative and unproductive relationships. When you are in one and you've been in one for quite some time and you cannot get out of it. Remember, right. lies are also soul ties. Yes. Lies are soul ties because there are something that you start believing that becomes your truth. Mm -hmm. The lie is not the truth, but the lie is your truth. It's a dangerous thing when the lie is not the truth, but the lie becomes your truth. When the lie becomes your truth, then it gets tied. Yeah. Where does it get tied at? It gets tied in your mind, mind your yeah. will, your emotions, your memory, your imagination, your personality. personality. Mm -hmm. When it gets tied there, then it becomes a soul tie. Then if it stay there long enough, you nurse it and rehearse it, it becomes a strong hold. You just said something that was so powerful, and I hope people caught it. The enemy can start telling you lies for so long yeah. that the lie becomes your truth. Yeah, absolutely. Have you ever heard like people say like, I just got to live my truth. My truth. Your truth is a lie. Yeah. So basically <laughs> you really just, you're saying, I just got to live my lie. Yeah. Because your truth was you you, yeah. you 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 became one with whatever that was from a place of absolutely. deceit. So that's so good. Yeah. Literally, you can become one with your truth, yeah. but you really are becoming one with the lie. And Jesus says, it comes from scripture in John 17 and 17. I know the ultimate question now is, what is truth? Mm -hmm. Jesus says in John 17 and 17, he says, thy word is truth. Mm -hmm. So watch this. If the enemy, this is the reason why the enemy had to hit Jesus with the word. Jesus. He already know he's the deceiver. And the only way that he can knock Jesus off or defeat Jesus, he got he knows the truth, but he gotta believe the but he gotta he gotta make Jesus believe a lie. If Jesus don't believe a lie, then Jesus will not be a victim to him. Mm -hmm. So therefore, he says this. If you are the son of God, yep. command these stones to me made bread. bread. Yeah. Jesus like, I don't really need that attention. 
<laughs> it is written. Yep. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. So he caught this. Oh, man, he got word. Yeah. I know word, too. Yeah. But my job is to use Jesus for my own personal gain. Right. Take advantage of him. Right. Well, the word also says he will give his angels charge over you. Right. Unless you dash your feet against a stone. stone. Right. He says, throw yourself off right. and watch. Let the angels come and grab yes. you. In other words, what he was trying, what he was trying to get Jesus to buy into was this. Um, uh, that's, that's truth. But here comes the ultimate level of truth, which is my truth. Mm -hmm. And I want you to buy into my, my truth. truth right. And if you buy into my truth, then I got you. Right. Or right. Are you with Absolutely. me? And so the danger that takes place is number one, people don't know the word. So if you don't know the word, you don't have truth. And so anything that sounds like truth, it can blur you in. And if it's not the truth, it becomes a lie and he got you. You know, I think nowadays um, people know the word. You know, yeah. the problem is we know it in our head, but we don't know it in our heart. Yeah. So this is the thing. The enemy also knew the word yeah. and he knew how to use the word against. He knew how to use the word against Jesus to try to make Jesus prove himself. Absolutely. That's the dangerous part to know the word in your head, but not to let it literally be convicted in your heart. It had to take a, a real heart conviction yeah. for Jesus to be able to say, no, 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 it's yeah. not my time. I don't have to prove myself no. to the enemy yeah. because it was heart revelation. Yeah, for sure. And, and Jesus was in relationship. Absolutely. Well, so, that, that, you can't be, it cannot be a heart revelation if you're not in relationship. Yeah, that's the, the only way. That's, I feel like that's the, the two to two. You can't yeah. have one without the other. Satan was using religion. Yeah. There Jesus was using relationships. Yes, sir. How is that, Pastor James? Because Satan was using the word without the spirit. Mm. And anytime you got word That's without good. the Holy Spirit, you got religion. That's so good. Are you with me? Jesus was in relationship. He comes right back and like, I can't tempt the Lord, my, my God. God. Do you realize I know I know what this says, but I know what the spirit is on what this says. If I if I throw myself down, then I switch spirits. I get in the arrogance. Mm -hmm. And if I get in the arrogance, then that means I am opposite of humility. Absolutely. So he knew the word, and so therefore he had the spirit of humility with him. That's the reason why he wouldn't go for it. So good. Are you with me? So, good. so ladies and gentlemen, let me let me help. Let me help you. Let me help you. Let, let me help you. One of the most dangerous things about deception is that deception is designed to keep you attached to religion. So the lie that we're talking about today, mm -hmm. the lie that keeps us tied, uh -huh. one, religion. Religion. Yeah. One of the lies that keep you tied to religion is this. Certain people say this. When you start talking about religion and relationship, well, I got to pray a certain amount of time. I got to fast a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. I got to read my Bible for a certain amount of time in order to have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Lie. Mm. It's not about how much time you do it. You, you, you read, you fast, you study. It's not about the time. It's actually about the purity of your heart and the motive of your heart for why you are doing what you're doing. I'm not telling you that you shouldn't read. Right. You should read. I'm not telling you that you shouldn't pray. Yep, you should pray. I'm not telling you you shouldn't fast. Let me help you. We going on a 21 day fast at the first of the year in 2023 anyway. <laughs> but I'm trying to, what I'm trying to tell you this, that watch this, relationship is not built on rules. Relationship is built on a connection. Right. I'm reading, I'm studying for however long I'm doing it because the motive is I want to connect to God. I want to get close to God. I want to sense God's presence. And I want to know this, that I'm on the same flow that God is on. And you know what else? I'm going to take it one step, um, one more word with that. I'm in relationship because I want to be more like God. Absolutely. It's so much to the point where I almost talked about this one day. Wow. We have a, a lot of people that are so caught up on the gifts of That's the Spirit. That's so good. It's there are so many people are caught up so many we want to be in which these things are good it's so much about tongues talking in tongues interpretation of tongues a lot about prophecy a lot about preaching there's a lot of things that we really emphasize yeah but this is something that in my quiet time the holy spirit was talking to me because once again i'm having this whole conversation about lord i just don't know if this is for me and he says tiffany it makes me get teary-eyed 
He says, you have my heart because you are literally able to exude the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. We're so caught up in talking in tongues and about the things that make us look super spiritual. But when was the last time that you were just patient with somebody? Mm -hmm. When was the last time the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, self-control, when was the last time you really exuded the fruit of the spirit and not just so much about the spiritual things that come along with it. We're so caught up on spiritual gifts. And what you're saying right now, religion looks like I can do a bunch of religious things. Yeah. Relationship looks like I don't do certain things because I want to look like him. Mm. So the way that I treat people, mm. the way that I try my best to love people, the way that I try very hard to stay away from like negative things like gossip and just being rude or, mm. or being to my flesh, mm. Pastor James, it often doesn't have a lot to do with me even um, some of the things that you named off like being in relationship. Mm. I have one goal. I want to look like him. Yeah. I want to sound like him. I, I want, when he looks down on earth, I really want myself to be a reflection of him. When I take my last breath, I want people to be able to say she was loving, she was kind, she was honest, she was full of integrity, she wanted to lead people to Christ. Yeah. We have so many That's prayer heavy. warriors, That's Facebook heavy. prayer warriors. We have so many warriors that want to be on the stage at the church. We have so many people that are wanting to go in publicly but like, who are you privately? When was the last time it was just you and God and you just said, God, I, I pray things like, Lord, how can I love you better? Lord, how, 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 wh what do I do? How would you handle th this situation? I have conversations with God about like, how do you want to be treated? Because the more I know how he wants to be treated, that's the demand I can put on myself for how I want to be treated. Yeah. It's one of those things where our relationship is so reciprocal. We've made it be about religion where we just serve God and we do, we do things and it's just, we do, 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 but we never become. So when God looks down, he sees a person that's doing a lot of things but he doesn't see a person that ever really became him. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I can. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck at the first at the first statement because that's extremely that's the purpose. But I, I don't. I, but it's a lie in it. It's a lie behind. Let, let me explain. Explain that. You just you made a statement. You said it's, it's, it's what I'm trying to say is people believe a lie. And that's the truth, but people believe a lie behind it. Now, mm -hmm. you said this, I'm in a relationship with God because I want to become like God. Yeah. And the lie that most people tell themselves is this, I can never become like God. Right. They tell themselves that simply because nine times out of ten, God knows my heart. Right. Because in all actuality, they don't want to become more like God. Right. And I'm not, you know, it's the point of, because that was one of the things that I'm thinking about Satan. It's never to the point of becoming like God because I want to be the one to do the signs, the miracles, yeah. the wonders. It's literally coming from a place of, Lord, how do I love like you? Yeah. How do I give like yeah. you? How, how, how do yeah. I nurture and comfort like you? It's from the purest and most innocent type of place. Romans 8, 28, everybody, when they get in tight situations or trouble, they say, well, all things work together for good mm -hmm. to those who love God, to those who are the called according, according to, to his purpose. purpose. Nobody continues to mm -hmm. read, though, because the Bible says for those he foreknew, my God, he also predestined to be conformed to the image mm -hmm. of his dear son. So what you're That's saying so is good. I'm in a relationship right. because I'm trying to do the rest of I'm trying to get from Romans 8, 28 to Romans 30. Whom he did foreknew, he them he also conformed to. I mean, them he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his dear son. I'm in a relationship, but I'm trying to conform to the image of him. Yeah. Right. So if I'm trying to conform to the image of him, then this means that the God of the universe is living in my spirit. I gotta be intentional about him, starting to live in my soul and coming out of my body. But watch this. I cannot do that if I do not believe. I can be just like God. Jesus. Ninety percent of Christians will say this: "I know God in me, and I know and I know I'm saved, but I don't want to become like God. I don't believe I can become like God, because the gospel is designed to empower you, 
But lies, that's why that sinner saved by grace, that's why I hate it so much. Because it puts the limit on you to make you feel like that you can never become like God. And what this is actually saying is, this is so, so the Lord says in Romans 6, he says either you're going to be a slave to sin God, or, or a slave, slave to righteousness. righteousness. Yep. It's either somebody lying. Right. Either the Bible line or you lying. Right. The Bible line or culture is lying. Right. The Bible is lying or people who don't have the full revelation of the teaching right. lying. And I'm saying this, the lie going to keep the lid on you. Absolutely. It's going to keep the label on you. The lie behind that the lie that comes behind that statement, I'm in relationship with God because I want to be like him. Then the lie that comes, you can't do that. Right. Who you think you are. Right. So the enemy already know this. The enemy know you just like God now. Absolutely. His Absolutely. job is to continue to give you lies to make you believe that you can never be like Absolutely. God. Absolutely. So therefore, if you, now our question is this, which lie, I mean, which truth, which, which one is going to become your truth? If you don't read the word to see that you are just like him already, yeah. you will never become it. You can become it. And your relationship cannot get to the place of authenticity. That's the whole one of the things when Jesus came, of course, for salvation. But the other part was for Jesus to walk the earth to give us an example Absolutely. because he was able to do it. And now even more, he told his, his disciples, it, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is imperative, it's it is expedient. expedient that I go yeah. away because if yeah. I don't come, I cannot send another, Absolutely. which is a common. So now he's saying, because listen, he could not be yeah. everywhere as a man. Yeah. But if I die, yeah. I can now have my spirit live inside of yeah. you and greater works shall yeah. you do. Absolutely. So we, it's our responsibility to become yeah. like Jesus. That's yeah. the goal. That, that's the goal of Christianity. <laughs> that's what it should that's be. That's the goal of you walking with God. When, right. you said, when you said, I do to Jesus Christ, that's basically what you were saying. I give up my old life to put on the whole new life. And become all of all of who he is. Right. But like we say, all right, as you say, I'm in religion, I'm in relationship with God because I want to become just like God. You said something. I want to become just like God. People are afraid to make that statement because they don't believe that they can. So now, so now, watch this. I'm saved. I don't really believe I can come become like God. But watch this. I gotta keep my salvation. So when most people are in their immature state, this is the next lie that comes to the table. Once I'm saved, always I'm always saved. saved. Yeah, yeah. So that puts them in a position where they feel like I can't even lose my salvation. Mm. The scariest part about that is, well, you just said you don't think you can be like God. Mm -hmm. Are you sure you saved? Okay, I'm not trying no, to no, go no, too no. deep. Okay, I'm, well, I'm, no, no, I'm, 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 I'm a rail us back in a little bit. The reason you're saying that, mm -hmm. because I, I got to be honest, when the Holy Spirit is in you, mm -hmm. when he's in yeah. you. It's some fruit coming out you. It's some fruit coming out. But let me, it, but I'm being honest, when the Holy Spirit is in you, Pastor James, mm -hmm. it is just an awakening and a conviction. Yeah. Where it's just certain stuff I cannot do anymore. I will not do. I, I will not. I cannot. Yeah. I know how to kill my flesh to it. I think it's not a matter. It's it's tough because you don't want you're not in somebody's heart. You can't. Yeah. You don't see their heart and yeah. you know if they're saved or not. Yeah. But I'm telling you I'm now, not, when I'm you're deeply, no, I got yeah. you. But when you're when you are saved yeah. and the Holy Spirit yeah. is in you. Yeah. It's a change. Yeah. And I don't know if people need to, to, to get another touch from God yeah. or what it is, so, but it's just a, a certain level of conviction and repentance that's in me that is literally the proof that he's living in me. What I'm trying to show y'all by way of conversation that you think is one lie you got to find. Sir. But when you start having this type of conversation, you start realizing it may be seven or eight that is stemming from the main one. Right. I'm in a relationship because I want to become like God, right? That's the statement. Right. Then you start thinking like, I don't think I can become that. That's a lie. Right. Right? So, but at the same time, I want to save my salvation. I don't think, I'm believing a lie. I don't think I can become like God. But at the same time, don't nobody talk about hell. <laughs> because I'm a son or a daughter also. Right. So therefore, you go into once saved, always saved. So watch this. So if any opposition come, or if anything start coming to deal with your flesh, you're already telling yourself in your mind, well, I can indulge a little bit. Right. Because once saved, 
always saved. Right. And so now, watch this. I won't even try. I won't even try to become more like God because of my relationship with God. Yeah. And so when real teaching start coming, you know what you'll start saying then? That's religion. Mm-hmm. When, when you start teaching and preaching, be ye holy as I'm holy. Then people will start thinking in terms can of I, that's religion. Can I be honest with you, Pastor? I got to say this real quick. Okay. You know what, what, what we don't realize is, you know what's religion? A lukewarm relationship. That's religion. We don't never, we never want to talk about what we say is, you know, you can't judge me. You can't tell me what to do. What religion really is, mm-hmm. is when you are entering into a place of a lukewarm relationship. That's religion. I can do everything that I want to do, say whatever I want to say, just whatever I want to do, and God knows my heart. Mm-hmm. That's religion. Because guess what? Mm-hmm. You and I are in a re- relationship. Yeah. Every day I leave this house, you know what? Yeah. I can do whatever I want to do yeah. if I wanted to but do I it. But I choose not. But because I'm in relationship mm-hmm. with you, I'm in mm-hmm. commitment with mm-hmm. you, this is much mm-hmm. more than just our, I'm a, I'm a compare religion to just like a marriage license. Yeah. Our relationship yeah. is so much more yeah. than just the marriage license. Mm-hmm. And it's because I'm in relationship yeah. with you, there is a level of self-control. Yeah, sure. There is a level of honor yeah. and value yeah. and, self, and self-respect yeah. Yeah. and, you know, yeah. adoration that I have yeah. for my husband mm-hmm. that when I leave this place, you can trust me. Yeah. You, you know there's nothing lukewarm right. about me yeah. when it comes to you. That's the exact same thing. Why do we put more weight on man relationship with man mm. than we do with our relationship with Absolutely. the Holy Spirit. If you're not going to treat your husband your, 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 or your wife or your children or your mother or your supervisor, if you have restrictions or there's certain things that you're just not going to do, yeah. why is it the only time that we feel like we can just do whatever we want to do yeah. is when it comes to spirituality? Yeah. Absolutely. I don't get it. And as the world continues to get darker and darker, ladies and gentlemen, you need these type of challenging teachings to come at you harder and harder. Yeah. Because there is a dividing line that's going to, it's, it's going to, uh, the line in the sand got to be drawn. You, are you with me? Pastor James, when we talked about this earlier, we were going to talk about religion. I can honestly say, I took a hiatus. I grew up in the church. I'm a preacher's kid. I took a hiatus from church from like, as soon as I graduated high mm-hmm. school through college, all of my mm-hmm. 20s. And it was for this very reason. Yeah. I was just sick of religion. Yeah. I, I did not have, it, it wasn't, I, I guess I was in my mind, you could just go to church on Sunday. Yeah, I wanted to go to church church, and then get to the, get yeah. to the next brunch. Yeah. I just wanted to live life on my own terms. And I would invite God in mm-hmm. sometimes. Mm-hmm. But when I start really getting into this, I started realizing, Tiffany, you really weren't in relationship with yeah, him. Sure. You were in relationship with yourself. Yeah. You were in relationship with your flesh. And the other thing is, I'm not going to make an apology for it or even say it's hard teaching. I, because now that I know better, I do better. I did not see other young people like you and I literally laying this type of gospel out where you literally have the ability to be saved, live saved, Mm -hmm. not feeling bondage to salvation. Mm -hmm. It's nothing boring about this lifestyle. I think the other part a lie that religion teaches us that, you know, over here it's boring. All that church stuff is boring. I mean, that that right there is a lie. It's a lot of freedom and a lot Mm -hmm. of peace over here. Yeah, for sure. And so you'll tell yourself that lie so you can give yourself the opportunity to do what you really, really want to do anyway. Right. (laughs) That's be disobedient (laughs) and be disrespectful. You know, because in all actuality, that's what you wanted to do. But let me help you all. As you are growing in God and maturing in God, the things that you got a desire to do right now that is kind of worldly and fleshly, when you grow and mature and yeah. you don't have a desire for it, when I don't have a desire for certain things, that don't mean that this life is boring. Right. I just That's don't so have a good. lie. I right. just don't have a desire right. for what y'all are doing, so right. to speak. I don't have a desire to get high. I don't have a desire to go to the club. I don't have a desire to run around and, you know, be somebody or not. That's not, I don't have that desire. So since I don't have that desire, you can't make it seem like that my life is boring. Right. (laughs) You are not in me to understand what makes me go. Right. Are you with me? It's going to be immaturity. There will be other things that will make you get, that will be other things that will make you tick. That will make other things that make you excited. There will be other things that bring you life in other ways, but you will never get there if you never grow. Absolutely. I think another lie with religion, Pastor James, is not saying that we don't have the ability to qu- to question God. Yeah, for sure. So sometimes in order for us to be in relationship, in order for you to really get to know who he is, yeah. it may take some questions. It's 
going to take some questions. Absolutely. And sure. we can't be tied to the lie in religion that yeah. you can't question God. Yeah. Man, and the truth of the matter is, can I help y'all? When we start talking about having an encounter with God and having moments with God that the normal person just don't have, that brings us closer, that puts a fire in us, that puts a desire to make us to want to live for it and live for him, it usually starts with a question. Mm. It starts to the fact like, God, I know this can't be true. God, why, why am I right here? Why am I having to deal with this? Why I don't know this? You know what? It's, why you won't show me my purpose? You know what my question was? Yeah. It was, God, what is wrong with me? What's wrong? What that else was my be? question. Right when you said, I'm like, I'm like, man, I remember that. That was my so question. So therefore, God sticks a question on the inside right. of you. Why? So he can answer the question by his presence or his power. Oh my God. You do not get the opportunity to get to the next dimension of God if you don't ask God questions. Mm -hmm. He's not intimidated by your questions. Your questions are so small to a God that is so big. You think for one second he is already the answer to the question. Absolutely. So what is he afraid of your questions for? Absolutely. You got me. But at the same time, if you're not growing, if you're not maturing, if you're not accelerating, you're not trying to get to the next version of who he wants you to be, you'll start thinking in terms of, I can't ask him no questions. Right. Because you know what the truth of the matter is? I can't ask him no questions because here's the next lie you start believing. God going to do whatever he want to do anyway. Mm. If you start believing God going to do whatever he want to do anyway, this means you're not in relationship. Right. This means that you cannot bring any type of effect to God, to God's plan, even though he called you a co-laborer. Mm. Are yeah, you with absolutely. me? absolutely. He said we are co-laborers with Christ. Right. And the revelation of him being a co-laborer with Christ, us being a co-laborer with Christ, actually took place in the Old Testament my when God. God said, I'm about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, yes. but, I, but I can't do it until I talk to my friend Abraham. <laughs> and he said, Abraham, I'm yep. about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham said, hold on, right. God. If I find 50 good right. people, will you not destroy it? He's asking Abraham. Abraham is asking, asking God, God a question. Yes, absolutely. Why? Because yeah. he's in relationship with him. Because he's co-laboring with him. Absolutely. I'm not making absolutely. any sense. So therefore, so when you start thinking in terms of God, just do anything you want to do. I can't ask him no questions. I, I can't do this. God going to do this. This is letting you know that, man, that your growth has been stagnated and you've been, you're living in a place of deception. You're being defined by a lie. Man, religion. Religion. What is your definition of religion? Rules. Oh, hold up, hold up. Let me, let me say it like this. Man's way to God that is, op, that is absent of God. Mm, say that again. Man's way, his direction, his mindset, his thoughts to God, but God ain't in it. Mm. Absent of God. Absent of God. Right? Yeah. So if God is in it, then it's some relationship. Right. Why you say that? Because God had to talk. Wow. So if I'm going the right way, he's telling me I'm going the right way because I'm in a relationship. Yeah. But if I'm going the wrong way, he's not talking. But I think I'm going the wrong way. I think I'm going the right way, and I'll keep on going. Mm -hmm. And I'm making any Absolutely. sense. So yeah. therefore, so, so deception is designed to put you in a place of religion. And when you get into a place of religion, he wants to keep you there. He wants to bury you right there, transforming faith. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me and hear me well. Our name speaks for itself. Jesus. Transforming. This means that we get to this level of truth. And watch this. When we, we do not get comfortable. We do not get complacent. We expect God to challenge us, confront us, and change us so we can get to the next level of truth. Right. We get here. We do not get comfortable. We do not get complacent. We ask God for another confrontation so we can get to the next level of truth. So in other words... We are here because we are growing from glory to glory, from truth to truth, from, rela from relationship to relationship. And the only way we can do this is destroy the deception. Jesus, so good. Ladies and gentlemen, to everybody that's under the sound of my voice, my prayer is this. We're in it. I'm going to preach part three next week. My prayer is this, that you really, really look at your life and you start examining yourself. And you start seeing, where in the world am I being deceived by the deceiver that's keeping me where I am 
when I already know that God got a better place for me on the next level. Pastor you know, we made a comment before previously. God loves us all the same, mm -hmm. but he does not trust mm -hmm. us all the same. Mm -hmm. And so often these hard truths where we start examining ourselves, mm -hmm. it's because God is getting ready to take us to another level where he's going to require more from mm -hmm. us and he needs to be able to trust us more. Absolutely. So it's not always just about what you do. He wants to know who, what, who you are, the, the inside of you. It's one of those things where you think about it's dangerous to give somebody a lot of power that mm -hmm. doesn't have a lot of integrity Absolutely. or it's dangerous to give somebody a lot of power, mm -hmm. but they don't they have low self-esteem. You start abusing what God gives you when you do not have the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. So often these conversations that we're having ushering people from religion into relationship. Mm -hmm. It is because there is a lie that is inside of you no, that me. is keeping you to the place where yes, God loves me, but this lie has me at a place where he cannot trust yeah. me. And in order for the yeah. lie to be broken, mm -hmm. you've got to enter into a place where there's some work mm -hmm. that we have to do Absolutely. individually, yeah. where we hear a message yeah. and it cuts us yeah. and then you can go and unpack it. Well, God, I want to move in my relationship from just mm -hmm. you loving me mm -hmm. to you being able to trust me. Absolutely. And we gotta kill some lies. Hell, and I'm done and we gone. Just because he don't trust you don't mean he don't love you. Right. Love and trust are two different words. Totally different things. Are you with me? Yeah. God has the ability to love you. Yeah. Still not trust you. Absolutely. He yeah. loves us all the same, but he does not trust us all the same. Absolutely. You're right. Absolutely, yeah. And in relationships, if a person has hurt you, that don't mean you don't love them. Right. That mean that you really don't trust them not to do it again. Right but you still love them. Right. So you may be tied to the unproductive relationship still be simply because you love them, but you don't trust them and you are afraid that they're about to do something else. Right. Yeah. But I said that to say in a relationship in a, in a relationship between man and wife that they could see it. So now you can turn this over to your relationship with God. If you're untrustworthy, that don't mean you're unlovable. Absolutely. Right. You can right. be loved but not be trusted. Yeah, man, look at Saul. Absolutely. Absolutely. He was, he absolutely. He was changed to Paul. So absolutely. that's the thing, but we've got to move ourselves. We always yeah. say from glory to glory. It also means maturity to maturity. Absolutely. It's just time for us to go to the next level in Christ. Absolutely. And this season is about a lot of self-examination. We never got to say the scripture before we got started. Use 2 Corinthians, Corinthians three, two, um, two, 2 and 11. 11. Yeah so that Satan will not outsmart us, for mm -hmm. we are familiar with his evil schemes. The lies that keep you tied, you may not even be aware that you have been tied to a lie. But because we're here and the voice of the Holy Spirit is My talking God. through us, it is because he, God wants us not to be caught off guard with mm -hmm. Satan's schemes. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice, you're done with the lie. You're ready to live truth. You've been listening to this, and this really has convicted you. And you want the Holy Spirit to come into your heart and eradicate that lie that you, watch this, that God don't love you, that God is not with you, and that God won't protect you. And once you get saved, you no longer have to be a sinner. My God. Open up your mouth and repeat this behind me. Say this. Say, Father in Jesus' name. Father in Jesus' name. Forgive me. Forgive me. For every sin. For every sin. Every iniquity. Every iniquity. Every trespass. Every trespass. And every transgression. And every transgression. Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God. I give you the right. I give you the right. To come into my heart. To come into my heart. And make me a new creation. And make me a new creation. Adopt me. Adopt me. Into the family of God. Into the family of God. I accept. I accept. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. As my personal Lord. As my personal Lord. And as my personal Savior. And my personal Savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that, it's already happened. The Holy Spirit is moving. Now, your lifelong pursuit has to be a lifelong pursuit of truth. Once you get saved, it don't end the thing. It actually starts the growing yes. into the next version, into the next dimension of who you are in God. To the person that's under the sound of my voice and you're saying, man, I... I've been in a relationship with God just so I can get something from God. I ain't been in a relationship with God because I want to become more like God. Mm. If that's you, just surrender. You heard this and it opened your eyes to see this is something different. It's doable. It's achievable. You can become like him. Can I tell you why you can become like him? 
Because he's the only one that can dictate and determine if you're like him or not. Not me. Jesus. Not her. Not oh, no, no, not no, not any other people. You're looking at people. Get your eyes on people and get your eyes on him. He said, I've accepted you in the beloved. He said you are the head and not the tail. That's the truth, and it is because he said it. Why don't you just surrender and say, I want to be in a relationship with God because I want to become more like God. He said, I'll heal you from your backslide. Yes. Say, Father in Jesus' name. Father in Jesus' name. I surrender. I surrender. And I submit. And I submit. Fully. Fully. All my life to you. All my life to you. I refuse. I refuse. To continue. To continue. Believing lies. Believing lies. That's keeping me tied. That's keeping me tied. To a fabricated version. To a fabricated version. Of who I used to be. Of who I used to be. Holy Spirit do it. Holy Spirit do it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice and you may be saying to yourself, I want to be a part of this family. I know without a shadow of a doubt, I want to enter this growth zone. I want to enter this transforming. I want to do, I'm ready because I know without a shadow of a doubt that the anointing that's on this ministry, if it hit my life, I know without a shadow of a doubt, I can turn it and I can change it. If that's you, this is all we want you to do. We want you to just shoot us, give us a, a message, shoot us a message by way of inbox and uh, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram, TikTok, either one. Give us an invite. I mean, give us a message, inbox, yeah. inbox message, and let us know that you want to be a part of TLCC in the next, um, in the next two or three days, the next 48 hours, somebody will get back to you. But you know what, Pastor James, it's so important. That's one of the things that we didn't get to. Uh, you need a community Absolutely. of believers around you to help mm. you on this journey. One of the lies that was on my mind that we did not get to was that I love God, but I don't do church. I love God, but the church is not for me. <sighs> you are setting yourself up for failure, and that is a lie that you are believing. One of the reasons I have been able to wake up and decide to kill my flesh daily is because I'm around a group of people that also desire to look like Jesus. Absolutely. When you get around other people that have the yeah. same goals as mm -hmm. you, that have the same desires as you, that's not trying to pull you backwards, but pull you forwards, pull you forward, it really makes a difference in your life. So when you were basically saying, send an email, I'm saying, get with a church that is going in the same direction because you need a community of people. Don't believe the lie that you can love God but not love his church. <laughs> it's impossible. My God, it's nowhere in the world because Christ is the head, the church yeah. is the body. Right. You can never separate the head from the body. Can I cut my neck off? And my head go this way, my body be one way. Right. And you say you love the head, but you don't want the body. Right. It's no way in the world that can take place. That's another lie that's keeping people tied to hate. Yeah. To you rage, know what else? To it's envy. also keeping people tied to seclusion. Yeah, absolutely. And it's isolation. keeping people tied to isolation. It's keeping people yeah. tied to loneliness. Mm -hmm. When God is saying, get around, assemble. Do not forsake the assembly of the saints. Yeah, absolutely. Get around people that are going in the same direction that can encourage yeah. you. You're not meant to do this thing by yeah. yourself. Absolutely. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice, it's time for us to worship the Lord and our giving. Yeah. Yeah, it's time for us to get excited about giving. The Bible says, if you give, it shall be given unto you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give, give into your, your bosoms. bosoms. We don't give because we have to. Yeah. We give because this is who we are. Yeah. We come from the DNA. And other, uh, we come from the strand of Jesus himself. And the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Yes. The first attribute to let you know that you got God's heart is that you look for the opportunity to give. Yep. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice, you can text TLCC to the number 77977. You can give your tithe, you can give your offering, you can give your seed right here to TLCC, or you can go to dollar sign transforming, transforming faith. faith, or you can go to push pay, you can text the numbers, um, you can text TFCC to the number 77977. There is so much um, joy that I get out of giving. I remember when the Holy Spirit once told me, he said, as long as you give, I'll make sure that you have something to give. So that's the thing. Lord, let Say me. Say again. <laughs> he told me this. He said, as long as you give, I will make sure that you have something to give. Yeah, absolutely. He, so that means your hand is always, always open. Always, because yeah. money is considered currency. Yeah, for sure. Currency is, 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 a, is a current. Yeah. It flows. So yeah. as long as you give, Tiff, yeah. 
I'll always have something for you to yeah. give. And my giving can sometimes irritate people. Yeah. <laughs> or I don't know why you would do yeah. because I have it. To yeah. whom much is given. To him. To whom much is to given, much, much is, is required. required. Yeah. And I would rather be the lender mm -hmm. than the borrower. Any and the week. only way I can be the lender is that I have to continue to allow things not just my time, my resources, money. I got to continue to be on the currency of heaven. Absolutely. Yeah. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice, right where you are, grab your phones, hold them up in the air, and you can repeat this behind me as you give your tithe, as you give your seed, as you give your offering. Say this behind me. As we give our tithes. As we give our tithes. As we sow our seeds. As we sow our seeds. As we give our offerings. As we give our offerings. We are actively believing God for. We are actively believing God for. Jobs. Jobs. Better jobs. Better jobs. Raises. Raises. Bonuses. Bonuses. And benefits. And benefits. And increase in sales. And increase in sales. And increase in commissions. And increase in commissions. Settlements being favored. Settlements being favored. On our behalf. On our behalf. Estates and inheritances. Estates and inheritances. Being released. Being released. Unexpected income. Unexpected income. Being released. Being released. Being released. Rebates and returns, Rebates and returns. Checks, in the mail. checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, gifts and surprises. Finding, money. finding money, debts paid off, debts paid off. Expenses, are decreasing. expenses are decreasing, blessings and increase, blessings and increase. Are, flowing through us. are flowing through us and flowing all around, and us. Flowing all around us. I thank you, Lord, I thank you, for Lord. meeting all my financial needs. For meeting all my financial needs. I thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord that, I have more than enough that I have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am a giver. I am a giver. I am a seed sower. I am a seed sower. And you say it. You, you give seed. You give seed to the soil. To the soil. Now fill me. Now fill me with more seed. With more seed to sow. To sow. Spirit of the living God, we celebrate you. We honor you. We appreciate you for blessing us with the blessing of favor. Thank you, Jesus. Blessing us with the blessings of acceleration. Blessing us with the blessings of increase. Father, breathe over the seed. Breathe over the tide. Breathe over the offering. Send souls. Send sowers, send servers to build your vision Thank you, Jesus. of a nation of transformation on earth as it is in heaven. Father, thank you for partnering with us as we are partnering with you want to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Transforming faith. I pray that you were blessed today and that yeah. even maybe you want to go back and just listen to this message again. Yeah. It is my prayer that we kill the lies of religion and fully walk into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. Um, anything you were going to say? Because I'm about to go into no, a couple man, announcements. Go ahead. You good. Go ahead. I can no, tell. I'm good. I'm okay. all right. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. As we stated earlier, please join us next Sunday, December 4th, at the Power Center in Houston, Texas at 1030 a.m. We will have in-person service. I am so excited Me about um, seeing you all again. We will continue with in-service person on the first Sunday of each month until we go into our new building. Yeah, I just want to remind everyone, too, that we are a 501c3 nonprofit yeah. um, recognized by the Internal yeah. Revenue Service. So if you have any year-end commitments absolutely. that you need to give out yeah. rather than giving it to the government, we are a church. We will be so gracious and ecstatic for you yeah. to sow into us. We are tackling a major project. Yeah, and we are about to put a yeah. giving campaign together. Absolutely. Absolutely. We need your help all <laughs> around the world. We believe in God for 400, 450 people to sow a thousand dollar seed because we're about to take on this and we're about to move to the next dimension. Well, if it's not 400 people to sow a thousand, 450 people to sow a thousand dollar seed, we believe in God for 900 people to sow a five hundred dollar seed. Yeah. God is going to get it done, and we're th we're thrilled. We're excited. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge. It's going to be a fight. But he says, fight the good fight know, of faith. What I'm so God on it. So we've already right. won. What I'm so excited about, we've never done like a giving campaign yeah, since absolutely. we've been in ministry. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit has positioned us that absolutely. we've always been a healthy church. Absolutely. And so we were even able to tackle this next project yeah. without even having to initially do a giving campaign. Hallelujah. But here we are. But, we, we, yeah, this but, is here. but here we are yeah. now. I'm just letting you all know that you're sowing into good ground. Absolutely. Because right now where we are, we are in a great position and we want to really go in and do our next location where it's mm -hmm. something that is so beneficial not just yeah. for us but for our children absolutely we are more than double the space of where we all where we were where yeah. we were previously on hornwood and our children's world is going to be Amazing. mind blowing yes absolutely yeah absolutely. for sure so to everybody that's under the sound of my voice we celebrate you we honor you we appreciate you and we are looking forward to seeing you next week at the power center 10 30 a.m so everybody 
somebody you can repeat behind me, say this, I am a faith giant. I am a faith giant. I walk by faith. I walk by faith. I talk by faith. I talk by faith. I move by faith. I move by faith. I decide by faith. I decide by faith. And I live by faith. And I live by faith. I will have a great week. I better have a great week. Because of my faith. Because of my faith. I have great faith. I have great faith. Because of my faith. Because of my faith. I will execute. And I will execute. My God giving mission. My God giving mission. Because of my faith. Because of my faith. We'll see you all next Sunday morning so we can continue building our faith. Y'all have a great week. Bye.